Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Channel Chat. I'm Alicia Fioletta, Senior Editor of Channel Marketer Report, and I have joining me Bob Lampkin, who is SVP of Corporate Development at Marketing Advocate. Bob, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you very much. A pleasure. So obviously you guys are entrenched in the channel space um, with, with a focus on marketing. Um, right. And it seems that a common discussion point and common challenge in the channel universe is getting partners to be more effective in their marketing efforts. So to start out our conversation, why don't you share a little bit more about what you see as the current state of partner marketing and you know, if these organizations are, are still struggling to get the most value out of their efforts? No, that's a great question. And, and in fact, that is a major problem today. Uh, for the most part, channel partners are either technically uh, sophisticated and they uh, know the products very well and they, are, they're, they think that by uh, knowing the products well and being an expert in that field, that will help them to sell. Uh, or they happen to be salespeople who are very effective in sales, but in all cases, or in many cases, they're just not marketing savvy. Uh, I, I joke sometimes that some people can't even spell marketing, let alone do it. So the challenge has always been how do you get the the uh, partners to actually be effective in marketing when they don't have that skill set and they don't have that knowledge? And the challenge for the vendor is how can I provide them with the kind of tool that will help them understand how important marketing is, uh, yet not require them to do a lot of extra work which is clearly one of the challenges that they have. They just don't have the time or the inclination to do marketing. Got it. So, so when we talk about the key pain points, you know, in terms of planning and executing campaigns, it seems like they're more focused on just like pushing the product out, pushing boxes, so to speak, but not necessarily on the awareness and educational steps, which have become so important, I think, when we talk about like the B2B buying journey. You're, you're absolutely right. And the challenge, of course, is that most of these companies are relatively small, not all of them, but they're relatively small. They focus on an opportunity and they, they focus like a laser beam on closing that one opportunity. And then they wake up at the end of the month or the quarter and say, I don't have anything in my pipeline. So they come back to the vendor and say, vendor, you need to send us leads. Uh, and the vendor says, I've been sending you leads, but you tell me these leads aren't any good. Uh, and, and it co goes back and forth all the time. And, and I think the challenge is that in many cases, the, the uh, channel partner really doesn't understand the value of marketing uh, because they're just not marketers. So we really do have to do an educational process to help them understand why it's so valuable. Got it. So to close the gap, so to speak, so there needs to be education, but is there also, what, what else needs to be thrown into the mix, I, I guess, to make sure that partners understand the value of marketing and also how to create campaigns or content or, or whatever they may need to nurture, nurture these leads effectively? Well, you know, it, it's, there's an old expression that if you want somebody to eat for a day, you give them a fish. And if you want them to eat forever, you teach them how to fish. Well, in this particular case, a lot of they don't, they don't want to learn how to fish. They just want the fish landed on the boat. So I think it's important for, for people to understand that marketing is important. But on the other hand, we don't expect the partners to actually become marketers overnight. And the only alternative to that is to do it for them. Uh, and to provide a tool that enables them to see the value of marketing, to, to generate campaigns and do nurture throughout uh, the process over six or nine months, and then begin to see the value of marketing. And at the end of that, the, the partner may say, you know, this marketing stuff's not so bad after all, and be willing to take the extra time to learn how to be more effective. But in, in many cases, the partners have, if they have anyone, it might be one person assigned to marketing, but they also might be responsible for billing uh, and and doing credit checks and maybe taking the trip out in the morning. So it's it's really important um, to, to recognize they don't have the time to do this. So we just have to do it for them. Right. At the end of the day, it's probably all about making the partner's life easier because at the end of the day, they're selling other products as well. So I figure 
you know, the easier you make it to do business, the more you'll stand out. And in turn, the more loyal they'll be to your brand in the end. You're absolutely right. And the fact is that they have choices and they have many things to sell. And in the end analysis, they're going to sell those things that are the easiest for them to sell. So by providing them with a tool, with a methodology so that campaigns can be sent out on a regular basis, that we have the understanding of who their best prospects are and how to reach them and how to work with the vendor to maximize their, uh, their marketing efforts uh, might be the best approach. And then ultimately, you want the, the partners to be focused on closing business and taking advantage of the opportunities presented to them. No, that's great, Bob. And through partner marketing automation, it's sort of coming to the forefront as a technology to help facilitate that whole process. So why don't you share a little bit more about the pain points through partner marketing automation can address, you know, the inner workings of the technology just so our audience has a better understanding. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what through partner marketing automation does is, in fact, do marketing for the partner on their behalf. Uh, the uh, important elements of it include contact databases, which in many cases the partners do not have a, an up-to-date contact database. And so, therefore, even if you sent out wonderful campaigns, if they were sent to the wrong people uh, or the contacts bounce, it doesn't succeed. And so the most important thing initially is to work with the partner uh, to find out who their ideal prospects are. And we have ways of uh, accumulating contact databases that we can apply to their through partner marketing automation platform. The second thing is to ensure that we have relevant content, not only from the vendor, but if the, the prospect or the partner has any, um, any uh, white papers or uh, or case studies that they think would be relevant and be able to share with their, their partners' uh, prospects, then we, we certainly can take advantage of that. And the other thing has to do with cadence, that one of the problems that most of the uh, partners have is if they've done marketing in the past, they may do a single mailing and then expect that all of a sudden people are just going to come flying into their, uh, into their inboxes. But the reality is this needs to be uh, done over time, multi-touch, uh, over several months in order to get people to be nurtured to the point where they're ready to buy. Uh, and, and I think that's really the key with through partner marketing automation. It's a continuous process that enables you to keep track of where prospects' interests are. And when they reach a certain level, then you're notified and you have the ability to close. Right. So in a way, through partner marketing automation helps – not only initiate that engagement, but build an ongoing dialogue, you know, keep, keep those partners top of mind, which as you said, because they're so strapped for time and resources, that relationship element, I, I could imagine it is a challenge for a lot of companies. It, it, it is. I mean, there was a concept years ago called the leaky funnel. And the leaky funnel essentially was all these opportunities are coming into the top of the funnel. You're concentrating on the bottom of the funnel, that one or two opportunities, and all the rest of them sometimes just leak out. Uh, and then you, you wake up and find out that you didn't even have an opportunity to close. In this particular situation, what you have is the ability to keep track of what, what a prospect is interested in. Uh, and as they reach levels of interest that make it appropriate for you to call them, you can call them. Uh, what through part, partner marketing automation does as well is provide a very, very detailed lead report that doesn't just give name and telephone number, but gives all of the, uh, the, the, the journey that the partner's uh, prospects have taken uh, so you can be more effective in talking with them when the time comes for you to speak. Great. Very helpful, Bob. So obviously this whole concept of lead nurturing it's becoming more and more important especially with more buyers searching online referring to social networks to research first so they're sort of later in the sales cycle before they engage so to close out our conversation are, are there any final best practices you, practices you'd like to share in terms of lead nurturing or aligning the right content to certain stages of the buyer's journey obviously since you're in the marketing space you have all of the expertise well, you know, I think ultimately it is paying attention to the details, paying attention to what your market space is, who your prospects are, uh, and being able to share it with the, the, the people, for example, at Marketing Advocate who are account managers who can help build the process. Uh, but no one uh, at Marketing Advocate is an expert in the particular market for the, uh, pro for the partner. The partner has to participate. 
uh, w while the the marketing is automated, it still requires the partner to participate. And that means helping the account managers to, to understand more effectively who their, um, who their best prospects are, uh, what they might be interested in. And, and finally, I, I think more importantly than anything else, we can bring wonderful opportunities to all of these partners, but they still have the responsibility to follow up. Uh, and, and sometimes that isn't always the case. And, and I think that's where an account manager uh, can help to prod the partner into, hey, you've got this great opportunity that was just delivered to you. Uh, have you called them yet? What are you doing with them? Uh, what other programs can you offer to them to make the prospect uh, react more, more favorably to you? So it, it's a combined effort. Uh, what, through, what through partner marketing automation does is does the mechanical work of what otherwise would have to be done by a marketing person. But that does not relieve the partner of the responsibility of using the system and closing the business. Absolutely, Bob. A lot of really great points, insights, and best practices, in my opinion. And I think um, our viewers are going to get a lot of value out of what you have to say based on your knowledge and expertise of the space. So thank you again so much for taking the time out to speak with me today. A pleasure. And uh, anytime. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.